Now that we have created a new Gradle base project, we can configure it to use the needed JUnit 5 dependencies. To do that, we will need to open build.gradle file, which is currently already opened in my development environment. And here under the dependencies section, we have two dependencies already added by default. Now, if you're working with existing project, then you might not have these dependencies or they might be of a different version. So you might want to make sure that these dependencies are JUnit 5 dependencies and maybe update their version. So for the test implementation property, we need to use JUnit 5 Jupyter API dependency. And if you have a different dependency here or you need to look up a newer version, then you can do so by opening a new browser window and going to mavenrepository.com. Using search bar at the top, search for GUnit Jupyter and click on search button. And here we have a list of GUnit Jupyter dependencies. Now, if I go back to my project, the first dependency that I have here is JUnit Jupyter API dependency. It's currently version 5.8.1. So if I want to update this version, I will go here and we'll look for JUnit Jupyter API. We'll click on it and then we'll click on the newer version that I want to use. For example, 5.8.2. If I click on it, then here we have a panel with different tabs. The first one is Maven tab and it is to copy a Maven version of this dependency. The second one is Gradle tab, which we can already use. And the third one is Gradle short, which is the format that is currently being used in our build.gradle file. So I will copy this shorter version of this dependency and I will go back to my project and will replace an existing one with a new one I have just copied. And similarly, we can update the version of the other dependency, which is GUnit Jupyter Engine. Because we already have this dependency here, I can simply update its version. I will change it from 5.8.1 to 5.8.2. And we can add more dependencies if needed. For example, let's go back to our mavenrepository.com and search for GUnit Jupyter. If our project needs to support parameterized JUnit tests, for example, then we will need to add another dependency to our project, which is called JUnit Jupyter Params. So I will click on it, and then I will click on the latest version. We'll select Gradle Short tab, and we'll copy this dependency to my project. Like this. All right, so as you learn more about JUnit and as you learn more about testing Java code with other libraries, you can use this build.gradle file to add the needed dependencies here one by one. But when it comes to JUnit, then instead of adding these three dependencies separately, you can also add a single dependency instead. It is an aggregate dependency and it contains all these three dependencies in one. So to find this dependency, I will go back to mavenrepository.com. I will go back a couple of pages in history. And the aggregate dependency that I'm looking for is called JUnit Jupyter Aggregator. It is dependency number three in this list. So I will click on it and then I will copy its latest version. I will select Gradle short panel and then I will copy this dependency to my project. And instead of these three, I can add only one aggregator dependency. All right, and optionally to enable the standard out and standard error streams, you can add the following property to the test section. So right under the use GUnit platform, we can add test login and then show standard streams and then assign it a Boolean value true. Now, because we have changed this build Gradle file, to make these changes take effect, I'll click on this button in the top right corner, which will load changes into IntelliJ 
to make it work correctly. Alright, so let's continue and in the following lesson we can try running a very simple unit test and see if it works. Alright, so we have the needed libraries and we should already be able to execute our unit tests using the development environment. And before we continue to our next lessons, let's quickly check if JUnit does work in this project. So inside of the test folder, I will select Java folder, we'll do right mouse click, choose new Java class, and I will call this Java class demo test. I will add a demo test method. In the following lectures, I will explain in details how to create unit tests, but for now I will skip explanation and will simply run this one just to demonstrate that we have successfully configured JUnit test support. Alright, so I will run unit test by clicking on this play button on the left side of my unit test method. And it worked. We have test report and I have green check marks indicating that test has passed. So it looks like JUnit is working in our project. Now let's try executing this test method using Gradle command in the terminal window. To do that, I will click on the terminal button here at the bottom in my development environment to open terminal window and I will list files in the current directory to make sure that I am in the project home folder and I should be able to see the Gradle W file. And to execute test phase using Gradle, I will run the following command dot forward slash and then Gradle W space clean space test. This will clean the project, will remove any leftovers from previous builds and will execute the test task. The test task will automatically detect and will automatically execute all unit tests. Alright, so I'll hit enter to run it and it worked. The build is successful and I have output from my unit test method. Alright, so it looks like GUnit is working and you now know how to add GUnit support to your Gradle based Java project and you also know how to use Gradle to execute unit tests. Let's continue.